Welcome. You're listening to Wi-Fi, where we connect what we know with who made it. I'm Keith Whitley. Long ago, Alfred Russell Wallace hurled himself into the fever-drenched heart of the Malay archipelago in 1854, a world ablaze with life, dazzling, savage, and prodigiously diverse. To witness his journey through God's eyes is to gaze upon a living tapestry, every thread shimmering with intention, every creature a singular brushstroke of unfathomable ingenuity. The world he entered was no accident, it was an epic poem. Wallace did not merely observe, he immersed, enthralled by the riot of orangutans blazing through the copper canopy, tree-dwelling kangaroos bounding like spirits above the forest floor, birds of paradise exploding in colors too wild to name, wings of butterflies wide as palms, and frogs soaring between leaves on parachutes of delicate skin. Every specimen won among the 125,000 he collected was a message sent from the depths of time spelling out life's relentless creativity and order. From the vantage of divine authorship, every being pulses with purpose. The orangutan's heavy hand, the frog's gliding flight, neither is mere accident but testament. Predator, prey, pollinator, each note in the symphony, each dependent on the others, a choir of survival sung in harmony across tangled roots and soaring branches. And every island each separated, each unique is a page in creation's living diary. And then the revelation, a 22-mile crossing, a sliver of blue between Bali and Lombok, and the world turns upside down. The creatures of lush Asia surrender in the blink of a sailor's tired eye to the strange citizens of Australasia. Here is the Wallace Line, an invisible wall drawn not by a man but by a hand unseen, abrupt as a gasp. How can it be? For a mind attuned to purpose, this is no mere quirk. This is a border inscribed in the language of creation. Here, a narrow channel is transformed into a mighty divide a signature in the very stone, declaring, this far and no further. Why? Oh, why? Why must the tiger rule only in Asia, while the kangaroo never wanders past unseen gates in Australasia? Why is the map of life patchwork, nature scribbling bright and sudden silences across the earth? Each absence is thunderous, a sign that the world is not a formless sprawl, but a mosaic of intention variety sculpted by wise boundaries, abundance emerging from limit, artfulness made visible by constraint. Seen from such a height, the where of every bird of paradise, the why not of the marsupial missing in Asia or the tiger missing in Australia, that detail sings of discipline, strategy, even love. Those invisible walls between worlds are not scars, but ornament, nature's lacework. Diversity is not smudged by lack, but sharpened, made astonishing. Through what is and what is not, creation speaks. The voids vibrate with meaning just as much as abundance. Thus, Wallace's journey is more than discovery. It is a dialogue with the architecture of the cosmos, a glimpse into the grammar of all creation. The world he mapped is richly ordered, not random, not indifferent, but marked by fury and depth and playful genius, where every presence and every absence proclaims a cosmos both logical and lavish a force behind creation as dazzling as the archipelago itself. Here, at the crossroads between islands, in the hush that divides what is from what could never be, God's poetry is made visible, each difference a stanza, every boundary a ringing pause, and all the wild eruptive life a living hymn. So that's today's signal on Wi-Fi, a world filled with wonder, written by a creator who connects all things from atoms to galaxies, from yesterday to forever. Don't forget, science may explore how things happen, but faith reminds us why. I'm Keith Whitley, and now, you know the truth. This was Wi-Fi. Stay curious, stay connected, and we will see you here next Wednesday.